Tom here from Warren Systems. It is March 2nd of 2023. And no, this is not a new breach from LastPass. I want to just reiterate that this is just a deeper dive into what happened because forensic investigations take time. And good news is LastPass hired Mandiant. Mandiant is a very well-respected when it comes to dealing with this type of situation. They focus on that enterprise market and they do deep dives. These deep dives take a lot of time and now we know the results and we know what LastPass did wrong. They mixed business and personal. A DevOps engineer was using his personal computer to do some business work and we're gonna dive into exactly what happened. But I just wanna reiterate, this is a mistake, but not like an amateur mistake. This is a mistake that is well-documented in plenty of other places that you don't do this. You don't mix business to personal. You lock down, especially if you're LastPass or any high value target, you really create a extremely clear separation so this doesn't happen. Let's dive into the details and the results that they share from their blog post and a little bit of other news that uh, was from Ars Technia on this topic. Now we're going to start here with the initial details attacked. Everything I'm talking about here will be linked down below. Despite high confidence in the outcomes of our investigation and actions taken in response to the first incident, the threat actor leveraged information stolen during the first incident. Now these are the, both the incidents I've talked about already. And then the information available from third-party data breach and a vulnerability in a third-party media package. This part I think is really interesting, a third-party data breach. We don't know what data breach that is, but it almost suggests password reuse because if you have a data breach at a third party and they get the passwords, those passwords should be unique to that provided you're using a LastPass password manager or some other password manager of your choice. But the idea is to have a unique password everywhere. So I think that's an interesting statement they put in there, but we don't know enough details to really tell us how that information was leveraged. Now, the vulnerability in a third-party media package, we're going to jump to an Ars Technic article in a moment to cover that. But let's dive into why it took them a little while to figure this out. And because specifically the threat actor was able to leverage valid credentials stolen from a senior DevOps engineer to access shared cloud storage environment. This is why it took them so long to find because which initially made it difficult for an investigation to differentiate between a threat actor activity and ongoing legitimate activity. This is where it's kind of, I don't know why they don't have better controls over this because they do say they're using AWS guard duty alerts when someone comes in from the same VPN or the same IP, maybe this person traveled and they were coming in from a lot of different IPs and that's how the threat actor was able to go, hey, this person bounces around from coffee house to travel. And that is a common use case. And you have to really be vigilant on monitoring the different IPs your users come in at um, if you're a company of the stature of LastPass. And not everybody does this. It is obviously a burden because if you block only maybe a small list of IPs or maybe you filter your VPN to only the US IPs, we still don't know where this person live, but maybe you geofence them a little bit and flag when something tries to log in outside that geofence, and then you have to, you know, go through a secondary alerting process. These are all things that their system's for, but I don't think LastPass was doing it, is the impression I'm getting here. Now, this is where the targeting of that DevOps engineer and the non proper, they just didn't separate their business and work life. This was accomplished by targeting the DevOps engineer's home computer and exploiting a vulnerable third-party media software package, which enabled remote code execution capability and allowed the threat actor to implant a keylogger. And I covered this in the Cisco event. When Cisco had someone breach their system, Cisco knew everything that was typed right down to the typos. And I pointed that out when I covered that breach. I have a video linked down below. And I have a feeling that LastPass doesn't have that level of visibility or this was the personal computer that they allowed their company VPN to be loaded. So that's a pretty big security event right here happening all because someone was using their personal computer or maybe they had access on their business computer to load this software. I'm not 100% clear on that, but uh, that's not good either way you slice it. Now, here's the Ars Technic article. And according to a person briefed on a private report from LastPass who spoke on the condition of an anonymity, the media software package that was exploited on the employee's home computer was Plex. And they do point out, interesting, Plex reported its own network intrusion on August 24th. And this was a password breach over at Plex. Now, this is interesting because that first line I mentioned where they used data from a third party app. Now, did they just learn this person was using Plex from that because maybe they were using their LastPass email address and registered Plex with it? Maybe. Uh, that information is not available to us. Or did they do some password reuse? I don't know. I hope that's not the case, but 
this is an interesting coincidence, but we only have this from our Secnia. We don't know absolutely for certain that it was Plex. And Plex did comment on this. We have not been contacted by LastPass, so we cannot speak to the specifics of their incident. Because the question is, is there a flaw in Plex? I know a lot of people run Plex, and I preached a lot on this channel about keeping everything in separate buckets and separate VLANs, separate security. So you have your Plex and the things running on one side of the fence and maybe something that you care about, like oh, your work computers on another side. Now, just getting access to Plex and getting access to a local server is one thing, but Plex running on your computer is a whole different ballgame and should never be done for a work computer. Kind of an odd use case in my opinion, but that seems to be related to this incident that media software was involved. Now I'm gonna leave this link here. Episode 86, the LinkedIn incident. This is a fun deep dive for any of you that are wondering, this actually happened a number of years ago. So there's plenty of corporate evidence of targeting and I'll highlight, I won't spoil though. So the hacker starts by looking at LinkedIn's website for people who work there, engineers, system administrators, anyone who might have access into that VPN. And you know LinkedIn was breached and this is a great Darknet Diaries episode that walks through what happens when a threat actor, a very determined one, has decided he wants to target. And there's a lot that goes into this one. It's a great episode, but this sophistication was years ago. Threat actors have gotten better, not worse. And one of the points I just really want to hammer home in this video is this is why I talk so much about separation of things, because you're worried about your computer being compromised. If you do work, you do personal work, you're a home user, even more so when you're a business user. And that gets amplified if you're a enterprise business user, you work for a large company that has something that a large threat actor is interested in, whether it's to ransomware, to gain access, to steal intellectual property. These are more and more reasons you can keep things very, very separate. We do this internally with my company. We do not load extra software. There's not my employees, even the ones that work from home, they are provided a computer to do so. And I'm a small little company here doing this. It is just imperative. It's important. I want people to really think about it because these things happen. That Darknet Diaries episode, like I said, it's an older one, but boy, is it good. I just it'll walk you through it just you know i like dark and diaries as in general but it really walks you through the sophisticated attacks that are occurring when there's a high value on the other side home users i will say could be attacked on this this is one of those things that come up sometimes of you know how worried should i be if i'm running plex and i don't know do they want to steal your plex library do they want to encrypt it and ransom you could you pay it threat actors do go after home users that got a more automated way. If there's a problem, they'll exploit it. Um, but it's still good practice. And if you are a home user, and a lot of you have a job in corporate, even if that job may not be technical, you still may be a target for things like this, because if your company has something they can exploit, it's all about figuring out ways to be leveraged inside. So let me know your thoughts down below. Head over to my forums for more in-depth discussion and thanks.